आर्काइव्स ऑफ प्रसार भारती प्रेजेंट्स द टाइमलेस ट्रेजर ऑफ गोल्डन एरा What can you say about women? About she who gives birth, about she who nourishes life? The woman of the northeast has yet another dimension to her, for in a lot of these states a matrilinear society exists. She's always had more say than her counterparts in the rest of the country. But there is a new breed of women too, successful in careers, proud of their achievements. and they have every reason to be so when i came back he, uh, came here as a journalist then i think very few people have taken me as a journalist because that conception concept of journalism as a woman women journalist was not there i mean i don't say women because in this profession i had come as a professional it was a competition open competition with men coat on coat and i was one among them as far as my generation is concerned uh we were very career oriented we were not you know only because we didn't want to just get married after having a graduation or having a ma degree we wanted to be something it was very difficult in a sense because we belong to a village when i did my isc and then wanted to go to medicine so uh, when i got my seat do you know what has happened my uh, his elders were advising him that what's the point in uh, uh, making a spending so much of money after a girl to make her a doctor because she will get married and her income will go to her in-laws house not to you if it is a son you could have you know you could have made her a doctor and that will be more uh, lucrative for you anyway that's how i became a doctor since my childhood i had that feeling that i have to be independent so uh, that was there in my mind during my college days during, during my university days and even after marriage i continued i met my husband we were in the same class and then in the final examination i stood first my husband stood second i think the total difference of marks was 2 marks and my husband yet hasn't forgiven me for that <laughs> he tells me that because most of the examiners are male and that's why because i am a woman they gave me two marks <laughs> more but then what has happened uh, we got married had children normally what happens if you want to pursue a career and career means whole heartedly because in gynecology there is no you can you go on checking a woman for 9 months and if she comes to in labor pain at night and you say now go to some other doctor that's the end of it so you have to go the whole hog there is no halfway so in that case i think the husband must be very supportive my mother was belongs to very older generation but still she was very progressive and she has brought me up in that way she is a working woman and i see that in my generation my friends they all had working parents also most of them so that is a great change in uh, developing a children's character a child's character my father was very supportive he was extremely supportive he always treated me like a, a son not as a daughter he didn't had the bias gender bias even during my young days they have they had always encouraged it and during my college days also i was a good debater i used to take parts in all such activities so that was there in my mind and also in the you know atmosphere i was brought up that i can be a working woman as well as a i mean housewife in, in the, short in <laughs> ah, yeah, a super woman exactly. yeah i don't say super woman I think we are uh, equal to anyone. You see, when we speak in the context of feminist movement among the Khasis, I believe it should be a little different from the feminist movement that we come across in the rest of the country and even in the other parts of the world. Because in the other parts of the world, as we know, the women they they want to have more rights and privileges. 
But among the Khasis, the women have already the freedom. They have the rights and privileges given to them by the forefathers of the society. But I believe also at the same time that the men folk, they want to change the system because they feel that the women in this matrilineal setup, they are the custodian of the clan, the custodian of the ancestral property, and the custodian of everything within the family, the womb, or the clan. So they feel, or in other words, we can say man feels that he is a nobody in the society, in the family, or in the clan. Meghalaya is a matrilineal society because the property is owned by the youngest daughter. When they get married, the husband comes to the wife's house. He stays there. The children take the name, or the surname of the mother, not the father. So, you know, from that point of view, it's a kind of even if you want property also, you can get uh, the father's property. Earlier, we had this matriarchal system, influence of matriarchal system in Northeast India. And so women were, had a very enviable position when compared to the rest of India. But the uh, penetration of Aryan influence also led to the penetration of paternal values and patriarchal values, which generally, naturally led to the gender bias. In the matrilineal setup, the woman, she is the custodian of the clan, just the custodian of the clan and the ancestral property. But she does not have the right because it depends on the whole womb, on the whole clan. Now for ancestral property, she is the custodian, but she has no right to dispose of that ancestral property. Assam noticed from the beginning, the status of women is much better than, you know, quite a, than rest of India. So what has happened, our rural woman has got a position in the house because the most, you know, the bane of women is the dowry system. So we have got no dowry system uh, in Assam. And uh, no, no, not even in Assam, that means not in whole of northeastern region. We still don't, do not have, not adhere to the dowry system as such. In fact, uh, as you know, uh, it is the uh, groom's family which goes and gives jurun, you know, to the bride's family. And there is no demand as such that we have to give uh, this much of money or something like that. So that is uh, where you can say the woman's position in Assam society has a is a better one than compared to the rest of India. As a professional from my organization or outside world, I don't have any gender bias. But yes, gender bias is there in the society, very much there. Uh, I have not been a victim of gender bias. But you know, there, uh, there are men who, who do see people, who do see girls as a symbol of, as a sex symbol. Even now in our society, the competence is questioned. That I have noticed. The Kerala women, because they are educated, then they found, they, they found it out that they have got a control over their reproductive system. They, that means they can, they, they can limit their children. So they may not tell the husband, they may not tell their mother-in-laws, they won't tell their superiors, but they will quietly go to a nurse or to a doctor and then they will take advice. So it is a kind of, you know, when you knowledge, it will give you information. Information will give you power, you know. So that what has happened, unless our women, and especially girl child, are educated, I don't think there will be any, you know, the uh, human resource. There won't be any change in the quality of life. I have noticed that uh, when a woman gets married, little, uh, you know, 23, 24 years, by then she is settled, she is economically independent, she forms her own opinion. And even now in our society or I mean most of the person who, I mean uh, the man or the family doesn't like a woman with her own firm opinion. And uh, naturally an independent woman would not like to act the coy wife the man, even if the man expects or his family member expects. So naturally the divorce rates are high nowadays also in uh, Assam. Far from the city, we see another face of the northeastern woman. At work, at work, 
and at yet more work. And probably the only moment of respite is when she is the coy bride. Rural areas progress, uh, it has progress, but it is not very significant, I would say. I mean, if you say that it is only university education or college education, then yes, but that mental exposure is yet to come in rural areas. In urban areas, sometimes I feel uh, the concept of freedom has been misinterpreted. The rural girls are much more sturdier, they work extremely hard and then, then the urban ones, because the urban ones are now I think their little bit of uh, com, uh, com, commercialism has come, consumerism has come and then I think uh, the husbands are getting good jobs, it's a nuclear family. So they are losing, you know, they are not that, uh, I won't say they are not that well equipped to face uh, uh, life as the uh, village women are. I have good great respect for our village women. People ask me that why haven't you taken up modeling immediately after your Miss Northeast. But I, had I stayed in Bombay, maybe I would have because it is the, uh, the happening place. And Assam is not the happening place because of uh, lack of industrialization, lack of companies coming here, all those reasons. Yeah. And, uh, and our colors, our designs, they have not been had the required exposure in the designing field. I think it is a fashion, fashion designer's paradise, Northeast India, but it has not been uh, explored. The Northeast of India has so much she can be proud of, and our women can definitely walk, talk with pride. Unfortunately, she cannot, for the burden of political unrest gives her a bent, shuffled gait. For her sake at least, and for all that is dear to her, let us hope. It is a short wait. Assam agitation came along in 1979-80. And after that, you know, that agitation was mainly, it was too emotional. And at the same time, they have created a, a kind of intolerance towards anything that's not like you. So anybody whose language is different, whose uh, religion is different, Who's, who speaks different uh, as you as we do. So that kind of or ethnically thoughts, thoughts are different, ethnically who are different, that everybody became your enemy. You know that they have made them all of those their enemies. So as a result of that, a kind of complete, you know, uh, intolerance was being generated which went along to become violent. Now some of the groups which have become a little militant at a particular period of time. Now they have come, I should say, n not to the mainstream, but they have come to understand the value even of electoral politics by entering or by, by, by starting a political party of its own. So I think this has given them the chance to project themselves. This has given them a chance also to to bring out all what is in their minds and in their hearts. So this has gone a long way to tap the resources or the inborn resources or even the energy within the youths. The state is going through insurgency for the last how many years, 15 years, 16 years. So, you know, there's a bun, you have seen it nowadays, you are here. The yesterday it was a bun. There's this bun culture going on. Then there's law and order situation is so bad there is no examination has not held for so many years. So what has happened, anybody who can afford, they are, they are sending, and those who are brilliant also. Because to get admitted in other institutions outside like Delhi, Pune, Bangalore, then you will have to be very good. Either you have to be rich or you have to be good. So they are going out. Once they go out, they find it that Assam is too, you know, it's a kind of claustrophobia. It's a, we are living inside and it's a kind of catch-22 situation. That means to improve it also, you have to improve the law and order situation. Unless you improve the law and order situation, there won't be any industrialization, there won't be any employment. If there is no employment, then there will be more of terrorism anyway. And it's a kind of like our doctors, engineers, we are a poor country spending so much of money and producing these technical materials and America is having them free. 
and then Western countries are having it free. So it, we are facing exactly the same situation. It doesn't augur very well for our Assamese society. Over the years, one thing I have noticed, amount of progress this region should have had hasn't been. Uh, I mean, socially, social exposure is not there because there is no exposure in economic field, most important. And the communication gap is there, so there should have been development. And for development, I do not like to, you know, raise my finger to, sorry, to the center. It is, I feel this region do not have a good leader, statesman who would really represent the feelings and aspirations of these people and present it to the center and get it done. In the course of life, one does come across accomplished people. But it is rarely that one hears of one so accomplished that she has three professions. Santana was an actress even before she became a doctor. And with the award-winning Adadya, she is now a very successful film director too. Before I became a doctor, much, much before that, I was an actress on the stage. I have been an actress from time to time. So even after I became a doctor, pediatrician, I never gave it up. So I think it is just an extension of that. Uh, Santana was it difficult to obtain funds for your film? Oh, of course. It's difficult for everybody. It's difficult uh, all over the world. But I think it is uh, much worse in a state like Assam, and particularly for somebody who is just a beginner like me, and especially a woman. <laughs> you are the first woman filmmaker from Assam, aren't you? Uh, I believe there was somebody else before me who uh, produced and directed one film. How does it feel to have achieved so much success with your first film? <laughs> I never expected this much. I mean, uh, when uh, we went about making the film, uh, production and post-production, we never expected this, this kind of uh, acceptance outside inside uh, the country, outside the country, and inside my own state too. Here also people like, seem to have liked my film very much. What kind of success does your kind of parallel cinema meet with at the box office? While these films are being made, I mean, uh, these filmmakers are making serious kind of films, other kind of films are also being made every year. They, some of them do achieve certain amount of box office um, success. But then uh, as a whole, the serious film is, has the same kind of uh, acceptance as, in, as you said, in Hindi language or in, even in Bengali or any other language, even in outside serious films. Even in Hollywood, say, serious films, they are always, they have one particular kind of uh, audience or viewers only. How do you see the future of Asimi's parallel cinema? Mm, I think uh, uh, even serious filmmaking, like say Mind Adagya, it has, I mean, finally it should break even, I mean, at least you should get the cost back. I believe that uh, that money will come back to the producers. So if even that much comes back, I mean, uh, even from uh, telecast, say, or amusement tax, which is returned by the government, Assam government, and then from the theaters also. 
if you wish to make a film with a grander scale, would you be able to raise the finance for it? After I went, uh, I got the, this kind of uh, acceptance outside. I went to France, not, and I met quite a few, um, no, I shouldn't say quite a few, couple of uh, producers outside who were quite interested. They said that uh, we like your kind of film. Uh, we liked your film and we like this kind of film. So if you are interested and for your next project, uh, you're welcome. As far as filmmaking is concerned, what are your future plans? Filmmaking. filmmaking. Uh, I think uh, I'll have to make another film to see whether the same magic <laughs> comes off or not. But uh, uh, before that, I'll have to find a story which would, uh, which appeals to me. Yeah. Uh, very rarely do we have uh, women yes. filmmakers who are as beautiful as you. Probably Aparna Sen is one of them. Oh, thank you so very much. You, uh, <laughs> be acting in them, uh, acting in your own film, let's say. Uh, no, I don't think so. I think uh, it will be very difficult for me to be in front of the camera and as well as behind. So in, instead of compromising, I would like to be behind the camera for my films at least. <laughs> If a tourist traveled all over Assam, one of the enduring images he would take back would be of the Bordeaux woman in her bright yellow handwoven wrap around. The Bordeaux are the largest plains tribal community in Assam. But their community is being subject to turbulent times as they try to achieve political and economic emancipation. They live in hope for a better tomorrow. Bordeaux is Sila in Assamese. Bar de Sikhla is such an expression of hope. Under the blue skies, they praise the great eagle that spans the skies, its wings moving with ease and power, watching over its own and their difficulties.